John Alzheimer is known as one of our nation's most recognized credit experts. Having worked for 28 years in the credit industry, John has become one of the most prolific speakers about credit and the go-to authority on answers to credit-related questions. Credit Countdown with John Alzheimer. Hello, my name is John Alzheimer, and I am a consumer credit expert with time previously at FICO, the credit scoring company, and Equifax, one of the three major credit reporting agencies. And today's topic is going to be a little bit about why information may appear on a credit report versus why information may not appear on a credit report. Also, why there may be inconsistency with respect to information appearing on one or two of your three credit reports, but not necessarily always on three of your credit reports. And maybe even more kind of down into the cornflakes, why a particular account which may commonly show up on all three credit reports, perhaps only show up on one credit report for a certain consumer versus three credit reports for another consumer. I think one of the issues that we have to get out on the table here, which is very important regarding the credit reporting system, is you really have two parties involved in credit reporting. You have the company that provides information to the credit reporting agencies. These are known as data furnishers. These are mostly banks, credit unions, financial services types of companies, debt collectors, credit card issuers. These are kind of collectively referred to as data furnishers. And then you have, of course, the credit reporting agencies, the Equifaxes, the TransUnions, and the Experians of the world. And so really, think of it kind of as a handshake. You have companies that furnish information to the credit reporting agencies, and then you have the credit reporting agencies then take possession of it and then place the information into their credit file system, which would eventually end up on your credit report when and if you go and apply for a loan somewhere and, and the lender attempts to pull a credit report. So do you have a company that may attempt to provide information to a credit reporting agency, but in order for information to appear on a credit report, the credit reporting agency has to accept it and they have to choose to place it on a consumer's credit report and they have to have enough identification information about that particular consumer that it will actually be able to find that piece of information when it does compile that consumer's credit report sometime in the future. So let's go ahead and start there. So there's always a systemic issue with respect to credit reporting. You have all of this information kind of floating around in this credit file pool that the credit reporting agencies maintain separately and independently. The credit reporting agencies, while they're in the same industry, they are certainly competitors. And so they don't share their credit file system. They all have independent credit file databases. And just because something may be in their credit file system doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to end up on your credit report. There has to be a sufficient amount of matching information between the consumer's credit report and the information that is in the credit bureau's credit file system. And that information has is used to essentially match the information with the particular consumer. And if that information is either lacking or doesn't exist at all, then there's no way for the credit reporting agencies to presume or assume that anything in their system belongs to you. And when you go to apply for credit, there's really no guarantee that that information will appear on a credit report. Certainly, it commonly does. Look, if you've got an account with any large bank or any large credit card issuer, it's very likely going to be appearing not only on one, but two, and probably all three of your credit reports. But that's not a guarantee. So that really brings us to number two, which is the voluntary nature of the credit reporting system. The credit reporting system is 100% voluntary. There is nothing in any statute that gives you the right to have all of the information about relationships that you have with banks on your credit report. Those are not rights that we have. We cannot demand that a company has a credit report on us. We cannot demand that our bank report information to a credit reporting agency. We don't have that right. The right we do have, obviously, is to expect that credit reports are accurate. And so to the extent that information is reported to the credit bureaus, it is absolutely reasonable that we should expect that that information is accurate. But because of the fact that it's a voluntary system, there are certainly scenarios where banks and credit card issuers may choose to furnish information on a certain type of account or a certain number of accounts or a certain fee managing to one, two, or all three of the credit bureaus, or they can choose to not report that information. You have some types of furnishers under certain scenarios where they won't report anything at all until the consumer goes delinquent. And then they may report that information once the consumer has gone delinquent. Again, 
completely legal, perfectly fine. The industry is kind of flexible enough with the furnishers that they allow furnishers to pick and choose when they want to report information. But again, they have to report accurate information. It has to be in the industry standard format or the credit reporting agencies will not accept it. Here's what I would suggest you do if, if you find information appearing on one or two of your credit reports, but not all three, and you want it to appear on all three of your credit reports, contact the furnishing party. In other words, contact the bank or contact the credit card issuer or credit union, whoever the furnisher may be, and just let them know, hey, look, you're reporting information about me to X credit bureau or this credit bureau and that credit bureau, but not a third credit bureau. And simply ask them, hey, do you report to all three of the credit reporting agencies as a matter of practice? And it's not national security, so they're either going to say yes or they're going to say no, or they may not know and they may have to get back to you. To the extent that they do report to all three of the credit reporting agencies, but it's not an account is not showing up on all three of your credit reports, then you can make the assumption or you can conclude that they are at least attempting to report it. However, there's something in the connection between what's in the credit file database and your identification information that isn't similar enough or doesn't have enough redundant matching logic or personal identifying information that's the same or substantially similar so that the credit reporting agencies are not able to match that information with your identity and therefore place it on your credit report. I've clearly, you're not going to get the full benefit of a positive account or an account that's very old or an account that has a very low balance and a very high credit limit. These things are, are typically very helpful for credit scores because the information isn't appearing on the credit report. And as we all know, credit scores are based entirely on information that is on your credit report, not information that is not on your credit report. So this may have been an educational kind of a 101 for you with respect to credit reporting. It may have been a little bit of bad news, but nonetheless, that you may have some more clarity as to why information may or may not be appearing on your credit reports. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, drop them in the section below and um, I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, again, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. For more videos and credit tips from John Olsheimer, go to www.tradelinesupply.com.